All right, so I'm going to try one more. Uh, one more thing here. I apologize, you guys, for, for the delay. I'm getting the spinning wheel of death and I'm trying to move through my slides. So um, we might we might wing this conversation, which is is okay with me. Um, but I'd like to have my presentation on for you. I know you can talk. Yep. I'm on mute. Oh. You can start. If it makes you feel better, I know a lot of people have been having trouble with connections the last, I don't know, like three days. So okay. it's not just you. Other in the, you know, all the cable and everything. Yours is like really fuzzy. Like you're coming yeah. in on my end spotty. Like I can't really, I can hear sound, but I can't hear what you're saying. So. Me too. Um, I'm with you, Jen. Is that Jen? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you go by If it really makes you feel um, anything, usually, okay. uh, yeah, whatever you feel like it, wing it. I love it. Depends. Some people call me Jen, some call me Jenny, some call me Jennifer, some call me Jake. So. Oh, funny. I love it. <sighs> so I have a problem um, on my oh. emails. My emails are like whenever I type something with an apostrophe, like it's or don't, or it goes out like normal, like oh. there's an apostrophe. And then when it shows up to the person and then in my mail, when I go back to look at it, it's changing all those apostrophes to question marks. So that's fun. My emails look very... Very professional. Okay, so I don't have the slide deck. I'm getting the spinning wheel, um, and it won't let me. It won't let me go through it, but. Fortunately, um, this is a topic that is fairly straightforward. And if you have questions, please feel, to, feel free to ask. Um, is everybody hearing me okay otherwise? I know that I can't do the slide, but audio. No. It's super crackly. Yeah, yeah. it's really hard. I'm going make that um, a bit easier I'm going to just sign out and try to sign back in on my phone and see if my phone works better than my computer okay so give me just yep. okay guys super impressive that, to see all of you on here yeah um Hopefully, yeah, we got it through in the training yesterday that you're your own boss. You're gonna boss your finances. <laughs> so hopefully we get uh, we get Chrissy's audio fixed because she is really crackly. We'll get it done. Uh, shout out Jen Edmondson on your uh, and also Mike Dix on your videos on your Facebook boss job both of y'all. Thank you. We're going to, Colin and I are going to try to do those more often. I had never added somebody, so it was a little, a little rough, but that's okay. And I always forget to flip, uh, you have to like turn the mirror thing off. So my dad, you know, is forever yelling at me that the wording on my videos are backwards. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I was like, well, did you do a video today? 
dad? And no. Okay, then. You got nothing you can say. You tell him, J-Dog. That's what I'm going to call Yeah, J-Dog. <laughs> That's lovely. That's lovely. Better than some of the other names I get called. So we're good. <laughs> yeah, I, I just Jenny doesn't work for me. J-Dog. No. Yeah, Jenny doesn't work. Jenny doesn't work for me. No, you're, you're not a Jenny. You are not a Jenny. Nope. Oh. All right. I just had someone. There, Chrissy. Let's see if it's better. Okay. Okay. I think we're better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Better. Awesome. Okay. So I can, now that it zooms off my computer, I can get through my slides um, easily. So what I'll do is I'll make sure that the slide deck actually gets posted somewhere if you wanna go back through anything that I talk about. Um, but otherwise, the fortunate, unfortunately, the, the audio won't be, um, be with the slide deck. Um, just reach out if you have any questions and let's get started. So um, today is talking about uh, personal banking versus business banking. And um, the one of the questions I get a lot is, do you need separate bank accounts? And ultimately my answer is always yes. Um, you need you need that for, for quite a few different reasons. Um, but, but one of them is keeping your finances separate from your business and your personal spending is gonna help you manage a budget a lot easier um, than just seeing all of your money funny, funneling into your personal accounts from your commissions and then seeing that as funds that are available to spend. So um, the difference between um, personal and business bank accounts, sorry, give me one second here, um, is if you have a, an LLC or an S -car, S Corp, you legally are required to have those separate bank accounts. Um, you, you do not wanna be piercing the corporate veil um, by having personal um, finances um, in your business accounts. And a lot of times those flow out as shareholder distributions. Um, but with lots of those, you are piercing the corporate veil, which is allowing in an audit, um, your personal finances to now be open to um, an audit as well, which then it's, it's your household and then it just gets, gets really uh, messy. So um, if you are not um, an LLC or um, an S corp or, or have your entity as a corporation, um, you aren't required to have the separate bank account, but like I said, it's less messy. Um, and you should at least have a separate checking account still in your name, but that's where all of your business transactions flow through. Um, it's going to make your uh, bookkeeping also a lot cleaner and um, able to recognize transactions that are one that are fraudulent. You're going to notice them a lot easier if only your business transactions are um, in there to know which ones are, are legitimate or not. And the other side on, on your personal side as well, um, you're not having to navigate through and remember, oh, was that uh, that meal or that grocery bill or whatever that was, um, is that in the right category? And then having to do extra work to, to get those um, expensed out the right way. Um, So let's see here. So this one, I would, I really wish I could, I could show this one to you guys. I have it um, on the slides separated out into what should go into your business banking and what should be on the personal side. So all of your, uh, your incomes as, as a uh, agent should be flowing into um, a business bank account, um, your commissions income. All right. Any referral income, so you refer um, clients to somebody in Florida and you get a piece of that, that should be going in there. Um, if you get any income as a mentor, that should be in here as well. Now that was just three of three different income categories. 
you can have buckets for each one of those in your bookkeeping. So you can actually see over the course of the year, how much of it is commission income, how much is referral income and how much is mentor income and to be able to see um, how those income buckets change over time. Um, when, yeah. Sorry, it's Sharon, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I'm wondering like if you, low tech me, if you took your camera and pointed it at the screen, would that allow for you to show us the slides that you wanna show us? You know what? That's a great idea. Thank Sorry, you. Uh, let me flip my screen. Sorry, don't look at all my, my cable mess and things here. Um, okay. So we've talked about the three um, different income pieces that should go here. If you have a side job or if you have um, a joint account with somebody else, let's put those um other incomes into personal let's keep this business account um strictly your business okay so we've covered those income ones now we have we're going to talk about operating expenses and that can include your fuel expenses um remember from last week we when we were talking about mileage tracking we talked about using the standard or the actual method so on this side for fuel it's either all or none based on which method you're gonna use. Um, but if you were um, expensing your fuel 100%, um, this is the side that it's gonna go in. Um, so payroll would be on this side. Listing expenses as a cost of goods sold could also be here. Um, meals with a peer or with a client could go on this side. Um, and then be sure to document all of those things accordingly and save your receipts. Um, the One of the biggest things is you do it, you choose that it's a business expense, you put it there, but in three months time, are you gonna remember who that meal was with, who was, um, what the business was that you were discussing and um, take those notes or still have that receipt at that time. Um, do that right away, it makes it so much easier um, down the road. So, some of the other things that you want in this business bank account are then any marketing expenses um, that could include the purchase of personalized uh, riders, headshots, magazine ads, donations to charitable organizations. Um, the reason I emphasize charitable, GoFundMes and Facebook fundraisers, those are not tax deductible business expenses. The, the organization um, that you're donating to has to um, has to be a legitimate 501c3. And um, if they are, they know that and they'll have the, the receipt for you and that, um, that number to substantiate. Um, marketing expenses would also include if you did Facebook ads, TikTok boosts, any other social media marketing. Um, licensing and CE continuing ad expenses. So um, Minneapolis Association of Realtors, National Association, um, other association dues, as well as Kaplan expenses and any continuing ed classes. So continuing ed is a, is a tricky one that people get confused on a bit um, only because continuing ed would be what you need to take to stay licensed. Okay, coaching as an expense is not always a business expense. Um, so be careful and you can ask your task preparer um, or the coach or course themselves for written documentation before signing up. But if it's just education that helps you do your job better or become a better salesperson, that's not, that's not always considered a business, business expense and can be thrown out um, in an audit. So other professional fees you want on this business bank account side would include legal fees if you're working on contracts or um, creating your entity, transaction coordinator fees, um, accounting fees and tax prep, and any other contractors that you might pay. Um, just beware that this category is likely to require you to issue 1099s to anyone um, or any business you pay over $600 to in a calendar year. So make sure at the time of creating that relationship with the vendor um, that they're going to do work for you, you're getting a W-9 so you can issue the right documents. 
All right. The last piece on business bank account side um, is having. I just want to clarify. Um, yeah. The professional fees, it's anything over 600. Is that 600 in a calendar year that, yep. Okay. I don't know why I was thinking it was 6,000. So thank you for that. I'll yeah, no, you're totally fine. Um, if they are a C-Corp, you, you do not have to issue a 1099. But if they're a sole proprietor, a partnership, um, a one person LLC, you're you're going to uh, you're going to have to issue it. So my rule of thumb is just get the W nine, and then whoever you're you know is doing your bookkeeping, your tax preparation, um, they can make that final choice of whether they have to issue the ten ninety nine or not. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so with this side is also a separate bank account that should be your tax savings. Um, you know, a business savings account helps you separate your savings from working capital and you can earn interest. Though it's, it's not a lot on a savings account. It still is something um, on the funds you set aside. So some savings accounts may require a minimum deposit. Um, others come with balance requirements and monthly fees. So make sure you're looking for a business savings account with the lowest fees and um, FDIC insurance. Um, now, what we're gonna talk about here really quick is just um, the deposits that you wanna put into your personal account, those actually would flow from here. Create a budget that shows all of your personal expenses and then make sure that deposit coming over covers all of that. Um, on a month to month basis. So real estate is, um, you know, unfortunately there is seasonality to, uh, to the business. So you wanna make sure that what you're putting over to your personal account isn't completely depleting, um, sorry, isn't completely depleting this side um, outside of your busiest season um, and not being prepared for, for the slower times. So, um, your deposits should flow over and have some sort of rhythm or consistency to what those deposits look like. Um, rent or mortgage should also be coming out of your personal bank account. You would have to pay this if you were an agent or not. So it is not a straight business expense. Um, I know it's sometimes easier to just have it on the other side because there's money there. Don't do it. Have it coming out of this one. Um, your utilities are the same thing. You'll have to pay those whether you're an agent or not. Keep them in your personal side and your tax preparer can help you identify uh, the percentages of those that would be tax deductible. Um, your phone bills, keep it on the personal side. And here's the, the asterisk to this is if you are a sole proprietor, um, this is where you should have your phone bills and, and the purchase of a new phone, um, any of those types of things. If you're operating as an LLC or as a, as a corporation, you can absolutely then move that over to the business side, okay? Um, but it's you might have to have it in your business name now, if your business doesn't have a lot of credit, they might want you to have, um, you know, money down on it. That's a choice that's up to you. But also building your business's credit will help um, help in the future as well. So that one could go either way. If you have more questions, we can talk about it on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, or, a, you know, a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, definitely started out here. Same goes for car payments. If the name of your business that is that bank account um, does not own the vehicle, then have the car payments come out of this personal side. Your tax preparer can help you figure out the percent of, of that car that is going to be tax deductible, but that payment in full is not one of it. So this makes it a lot easier. All right, groceries and meals. Um, I see this uh, quite a bit. It's it's really easy to grab this card because you know that there's money there and to use it. These are not business expenses. Obviously meals, if you have a legitimate meal with a client, with a peer, you're talking about business, put it on that business bank, bank account side, but substantiate it properly. 
um, have the receipt, have who you were with, and have the business that was discussed. Um, if you don't put those things with it, it can be thrown out in an audit, and then you're going to actually have to pay more taxes in on it than just get the get that thrown out. Okay, and then any other personal expenses should also be on this side. Your gym membership, your kids' swimming lessons, um, you know, all all of those things that you know that should just be on the personal side let's keep it over there it's going to make it so much easier for your future self to have these things over here than on the wrong side okay so um can i use the same bank for personal and business banking and the answer is absolutely yes um when choosing a bank for your business bank account it's recommended to start with the financial institutions you're already ready um already know um and like if you have a personal bank account in good standing you may get a better deal on a business bank account at the same bank but do your own research um some big consumer banks are not as favorable to small business accounts and have many either hoops to jump through or are littered with fees monthly fees so check with check with your bank and ask questions um, also check out your local credit unions as well. If you need a banking, business banking partner um, recommendation, I have one that I use and I love. Um, feel free to reach out. Um, but it, it ultimately has to be convenient for you. Um, and the bank relationship should also work for you. Okay. Um, how much money do you need to make before you can open a business bank account? Um, and the answer is you don't need to generate any revenue to open a business bank account. Um, some of them might want you to start with um, a minimum initial deposit. So that would be an, that initial investment for you to put in there. Um, and they might require you to maintain a minimum balance. So be sure to review the terms and the account fees on any of the accounts that you're considering. Um, so the, this last piece is just a few things to take the uh, few more ways to take your business finances to the next level. Um, one, understand your financial priorities. If you don't know where you want your finances to be at the end of this year, you won't, you won't get there or, or you'll be there because you don't have a plan, I think is, is the way the, the phrase goes, right? Um, set your priorities, know your goals, and then you can easily be tracking how close you're getting to those priorities throughout the year and adjust as needed. Um, set up your financial and accounting systems properly. So using your banking, uh, business banking and your personal banking appropriately is absolutely part of this process. Um, and then if you're, you're choosing to do bookkeeping, um, that is another piece of it. Having the proper chart of accounts, having all of those things in place is going to help you reach those goals that much faster. Um, maintain accurate records. Okay. Next week's um, Financial Friday is about receipt management. So we'll talk some more on a lot of those things there. But ultimately, the burden of proof for you as a business owner and um, with the IRS is to maintain those accurate documents. Um, you don't want all the hard work that you're putting into your business right now to get. Um, to, to not work for you down the road in case of an audit. Sleep better now knowing that you're doing it right. Um, I'll say that over and over 100% of the time. And then a last thing is get a handle on cash flow and plan ahead. This talks, this is a point to the seasonality of, of real estate and knowing what your expenses are gonna be in November, December, January, February, March while you're ramping up for bigger business in the summer. So you have that money put aside, not just for your tax savings, but also to make those months easier knowing that you have the cash flow ready um, 
and are able to focus on um, building your business well, not on not, not under a bunch of stress. Okay. That is my not so great deck for the day. I apologize for um, my shaky hand and holding the, the camera for you guys. Does anybody have any questions about anything that um, I covered today? Okay. If you don't, then just a big thank you for, for coming and listening and um, feel free to reach out um, via email or Slack if you have any other questions down the road. Thanks, Chrissy. That was great. Thank you. Chrissy. Thank you. Thanks, you're, Chrissy. You're welcome, everybody. Okay. Thanks, we'll Chrissy. See you, see you Tuesday. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.